This is a video about this kitchen microgreen garden. It's basically about the build and the grow. I tried to include as much as I possibly could on the build and the grow side. Um, yeah, so you can see it's basically just a light, a frame, and a fan. The frame is built from an old uh, shoe rack. And the seeds that I grew are actually nine-year-old turnip seeds that I've had in my freezer for the last nine years. This is a bunch of 50-watt uh, cob LEDs that uh, I used to run with a 500 MA driver that had a higher voltage output than the 300 MA driver I'm trying to use. It's not enough voltage from this driver to power all these up. I think this amount of power into this L amount of LEDs will be cool. Um, but since I can't do it at 300 MA or 150 MA, I'm going to have to cut it into like, it's going to be like 75 MA into each. See right here, this is uh, 150 MA into each because it's a 300 MA uh, driver that's being cut into parallel circuit here. So my roommate was throwing out this old shoe rack a while ago and I, I, I held on to it because I knew there'd be something something that was good for and this uh, microgreen garden idea this thing's probably perfect for because basically there's these little clips that go on these poles. I'm probably going to shorten these poles up. I'm just going to cut it off here. I'm just using this little thing. I figured it's food safe since it's like a rubber made food thing. I'm probably going to just put some perlite in there and put some a cocoa coir mat on top and see how that works. Don't you have something else to tell the birdies? No? Okay. the old shoe rack I modified. It used to be taller and a little wider. This is a couple of angle brackets I have. Uh, fortunately they were cut like perfectly the size for something else that I didn't use them for and they work perfect for this. They're basically going to be my mounting brackets that will mount the light to the little um, modified shoe rack. The original plan was just to cut those like that and then bend them off but the bend was gonna like break the metal, so I just like really deeply cut them. Almost to that, pretty much all the way through there. This will, they'll snap off real easy now without breaking the metal when I try to bend it. Here's that light all ready to go. I wound up using the M5 screws here to secure these brackets. And the thing just kinda sits on there. You know, everything is, uh, it's kind of hard to see with the light on. The positive and the negative of each of these LEDs is all plugged into each other. Uh, positive comes in from the driver here and the negative comes in from the driver there. I'm pretty sure that could happen anywhere along there though. Each one of these tiny individual LEDs on here, that there's 200 in total, are only getting 15 MA each from this uh, 12 watt driver. And uh, it really doesn't get like any heat on it at all, so it's kind of perfect. I could have that 12 watts going into one of those 50 watt LEDs and it would be hot and it wouldn't be nearly as much light 
as splitting it up four ways into the four 50 watt LEDs. So I have a five and five by six and a half inch mat I'm going to use. So the idea is two of these cap fools. Uh, I'm going to see how that does since it's kind of hard to measure these out. I'm hoping it's close to 400, which I measured would be like 20 per inch. This is my little germination method. I'm basically using my uh, amplifier to work as a heater. I mean, I'm not using it specifically as a heater. I'm also using the amplifier, but it's kind of just doing double duty as a heater. And these seeds have been in here for one day, about, and they are 10 years old from the freezer, and they are like all germinating. So don't ever let anybody tell you the freezer doesn't, oh, there goes the cats. What are they doing? Looks really moldy. It's not actually mold. It's these tiny little roots that come off uh, these, I guess these are turnips. Not all of them do that, I think, but some of them have these really tiny roots. Transferring the mat. I just wanted to, uh, I probably could have just put it in this perlite tray from the get-go, but... These are probably going to be under like 24-hour lighting, basically, because this is lights out right now. And as you can see, there's some direct sunlight right there. Um, one thing that could be a problem is this. Scout, hey! I'm gonna have to put up some plexiglass or something. I just grabbed the old spare parts and made one more of these bars for uh, hopefully a bit of a kitten block. Might have overdid it with the water actually. It's got I got an emergency fan sitting on top there. I'm um, giving a little bit of air because I think uh, if I go here and pull up a couple. Yeah, a bunch of the plants look like this. I'm not sure if that's the cocoa coir water making it look brown as it soaks it up because I noticed that the cocoa coir does tend to color the water brown. I don't know if I should have washed it out better first, probably. Roots look brown there and that's, you know, I don't want them to be rotting. I don't think they're rotting. It seems like for the microgrows the fan is required. I thought maybe just the one small little tray wouldn't need it, but um, I guess the density of those seedlings the top was constantly pretty wet, which, you know, if you know anything about the growing, they say that uh, that's not good. I'm going to use this uh, nifty little plug that happens to fit the uh, 4.2 volt adapter I'm going to use for this. This is a 12 volt fan. Um, you know, 12 volt fans running at 12 volts are typically noisy. You can run it at lower voltage and it just is quieter. Mounted on a piece of metal, mounted on one of these... Uh, shoe rack thingies. recommend getting like these kits of uh, hardware if you're doing this kind of stuff so you have you know different sizes and everything available <laughs> so since this doesn't have to be that perfect I'm just gonna drill one hole and put the bolt through and drill the next hole As a bonus, I'm going to convert this wall wart uh, DC power adapter into one that has a plug coming out of it. I'll have to notch a new hole in the side of this, kind of like there's a notched hole for this wire back here. And I had to make an extra hole because the original hole, I didn't realize, um, you know, this has, it has to slide onto that bracket a bit. And it was like this because the DC adapter was in the way. Up, 
probably should have just used a knife for that last cut. I'll bend this one this way towards the white wire and then so the other one I'll bend towards the red wire so they're not like close to each other. Here's the AC side stress relief. Ah shit. Mm, just like that. Just need to get the screw. Mm, so there it is, plugged up, ready to go. You can see how quiet it is. It doesn't really do a whole lot, but it should be enough to wick away the uh, extra moisture in the mornings. Hopefully. So this fan's pretty old. You can kind of hear it making some like rough noises. It wasn't really making this noise before. I'm gonna lube up the uh, bearings a little bit. I think it's quieter already. I didn't use any nutrients or any kind of special tap water. I just put cold tap water in a glass and let it get room temperature. Um, usually when I try to water the plants, I would just, just put enough water in to fill up that bottom like four millimeters at the, uh, at the bottom of the perlite there and leave that rest of that room for air for the roots to breathe. Uh, when they're baby plants, you're going to want to use a spray bottle to uh, just kind of water them when they're germinating and when they're, uh, you know, little plants like that. You use a spray bottle just to wet the top of the mat. Um, but then after that, you don't want the top of the mat wet really. So you're going to want to use just a cup, or what I used was a cup to pour something, probably be something better than a cup, but, <laughs> but a cup worked fine just to pour water down into the perlite there. So I went soilless just because it's in the kitchen and I've seen a lot of people using soilless setups for this. I do like using the soilless for this because uh, it just basically needs a little bit of water every day. So it doesn't require you to check it like you would in a soiled uh, container to see if it needs water. You just kind of give it water and the way it's clear like that you can kind of see specifically when it needs water. Um, it's kind of nice. I just kind of give it a little bit of water every day. So here they are on, on day 10. I'm not going to go any further than day 10. So this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope uh, it inspired you to maybe convert a shoe rack into something more useful or design your own LED grow lights. Uh, I mean, you could use that same principle to, to do very extreme, you know, very bright LED grows for all types of things. I'm going to actually make a video that details a uh, light that I built a little while ago that's pretty cool. Um, I think it has... 1500 LEDs in total on it. It uses that same principle so it's it's a bright light with tons of LEDs at low current you know in those parallel circuits.